welcome back to okay hi everyone welcome back to my channel tonight i'm going to be in the garden photographing a globular star cluster for the very first time Okay, so tonight I'm going to be in the garden trying to photograph a star cluster and this is the first time I've ever photographed one before. So I photographed a lot of galaxies, nebulae, um, a few other deep sky targets such as um, you know, the Milky Way, comets when they become visible, but I've never shot a uh, star cluster. So tonight I'm going to give it a go and in particular I'm going to be shooting M13 or the Great Globular Cluster or the Hercules Cluster. Um, it's called the Hercules Cluster because it's in the constellation Hercules and it should be quite high and quite visible tonight from about 10 o'clock onwards. So I thought I'd give it, a, uh, give it a go and try and get some data on the target. Okay, so the main reason that I've decided to photograph a globular cluster tonight is because of the moon. Now there's a big 85% illuminated moon all night long, meaning that it's gonna wash out some of the fainter targets in the night sky. Now the, there's also not that many decent narrow band targets high in the sky at the moment either. So I can't put my mono camera on the telescope um, and collect any narrow band in, um, data. So I thought I would give a globular cluster a go. So, so this, this uh, globular cluster that I'm shooting, the Hercules cluster, is absolutely massive. Uh, there's estimated to be over half a million stars in this one cluster which is bound together by gravity um, and the cluster itself is meant to be or is, is approximately 150 light years in diameter so it's an absolutely massive target. Um, it should fill, fill the frame quite nicely with my um, 2600 camera and the 1000 millimeter focal length um, but I'm just hoping that I can control some of the the brighter detail in the core so one of the key things or one of the the things I've read about um, shooting globular clusters is that it's really easy to overexpose that core and just lose a lot of detail because essentially it just looks like one um, or if you overexpose the core, then it can just look like one, one blob of white in the night sky. So I try, want to try and um, manage that if possible. So I'm gonna be shooting shorter exposures tonight. I'm gonna to go for 30 seconds. Um, hopefully that's enough to control the core, but also pick out those, the, the details in the stars. Um, I've seen a few images where they've, they've shot at around 30 seconds and they, they've turned out quite well. So, so fingers crossed I can get a uh, decent image tonight to have something to show you at the end of the video. I'm also going to try and take another video of the moon. So I tried this a few weeks ago in one of my previous videos and it didn't turn out too well. Um, but I want to try and get good at the technique of taking a video of the moon or a planet and then splitting those frames and then stacking those frames back together to give you quite a detailed shot of a, a planet. And like, like I said, I want to try and get into planetary photography or take a few um, images of the planets when they're back in the night sky. So I want to try and practice that um, technique um, and, and get a little bit better at it because last time it was a bit of a disaster. The main issue I'm having is that all of the software seems to be designed around Windows and I have a Mac so I don't have access to a Windows laptop where I can actually download the software so if any of you have got any tips about how to process these type of images on a MacBook then please do let me know in the comments below I would really appreciate it. So one of the great things about having a run of clear nights is that I can just leave the mount out under this barbecue cover. So every night this past week I've been out in the garden imaging and I've just thrown this barbecue cover over the top. So now all I need to do is take the cover off, put the telescope and camera on top and I'm pretty much set up. The polar alignment's usually spot on so it saves me a lot of time. So like I said, gonna go inside grab the telescope and um, I'll be set up in about five minutes.
Okay, so I'm all polar aligned, I'm set up and I've got the scope pointing at the moon, as you can see, and I'm just about to try and capture some video. The seeing is really bad. There is a, um, a lot of um, high level cloud at the moment and it's causing a big halo around the, the moon. So I'm not expecting a good image, but I'm just really wanting to practice the technique of capturing video, um, splitting those frames and then stacking them together. Um, don't think I'll have a good a good image to show you. I will show you what I do get, but um, yeah, the, the seeing's bad. I'm not, not really used to it. I've never really done this before, so I'm not, not holding up much hope. I'm gonna do this quite quickly, and then I'm gonna move over to the globular cluster and start collecting some data on that. I don't wanna spend too much time shooting the moon. Um, one, because I'm not too worried about the actual image, and two, because there's only going to be a couple of hours of clear sky tonight before the clouds roll in, so I want to, to capture the data on the globular cluster before it, uh, well, while it's dark and while it's clear. So I'm going to give this a quick go, um, and I will show you how I get on. Okay, so I managed to capture a few videos on the moon. Um, I'm actually capturing one now. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, if not, I will record the screen and I'll put it up on the uh, on the video. Um, but I think I've managed to, to work out the video settings, um, control the exposure and capture a few decent images of the moon. It's just a case of now working out how to actually process them. So, um, like I said before, any tips um, on how to do planetary photography or moon photography using a MacBook, that would be great. There seems to be a lot out there for, for Windows, but not a lot for Mac. So any advice that would be greatly appreciated so now i just need to slew over to m13 and hopefully i can get maybe an hour or two of data on m13 and uh, show you the image at the end of the video so thank you very much for watching i do really appreciate it um, please let me know your comments below please hit that like button if you can and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one